Hey everybody, this is Jerry. Welcome back to the Auto Layout video tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at constraint priorities and the problems they solve and the power they bring to your layout. Each constraint has a priority. The priority is just a number that ranges from 1 to 1,000. All the constraints that you've created so far have the default priority of 1,000, which means required. You can assign a lower priority to a constraint and that will determine the order the auto layout system uses to consider the constraint. This really only comes into play when two constraints conflict. The priority is the tiebreaker. But if auto layout can't satisfy a constraint with a priority lower than 1000, it doesn't discard that constraint. It tries to get as close as it can, sort of like your sibling on a road trip when you were kids. Another tool to add some power to your layout is constraint relations. So far we've used constraints to set the property of a view equal to another property. But you can also define that it should be greater than or equal or less than or equal to another property. Note that for this kind of constraint, there is no preference to be closer to the number. So if I have a constraint that the width of this view is greater than or equal to 385, Auto Layout is just as happy with the width of 1000 as it is with the width of 385. So if I want it to be greater than or equal to 385, but as close to 385 as possible, I'll add another lower pro priority constraint that the width is equal to 385. Then Auto Layout will try to get as close to that width as possible. When you put priorities and relations together, you can do things like specify that a label should be centered at a lower priority, and that its trailing space should be greater than or equal to a view next to it at a higher priority. This is useful for situations like different screen sizes, but it's also really useful for translating your app into different languages. You may know exactly how much space some text will take up at design time in one language, but when you translate that text into several different languages, the length will vary based on the language the user is viewing your app in. So, you see that you can have multiple constraints, even if they conflict, and you can define the constraint relations and priorities to specify how those constraints should be evaluated. For this demo, we're going to build part of a dating app. Let's start with a new project, and we'll just use iOS application single view application for this project. Let's call this Auto Layout Priorities. I'll just put this on my desktop. We'll be working in the storyboard. Let's make some room here. I'll use Command Zero to hide the project navigator. And we're going to drag out three buttons. We'll start with one and configure it, and then we'll duplicate that. We want our button to be a little bit visible, so let's change the background. And we'll change the text color. Like I said, we want three of these, so I'm going to duplicate this. And again, we're going to roughly size and position where we want them. We want them to have standard spacing in between them and to be roughly equal size. We'll do that now. And we'll change this one to message, this one to say like, this one to say wink. So the thought here is we have a profile of somebody in our dating app and we want to be able to send them a message, mark that we like them, or send them a wink. When we do that, we want the button for like or wink, we only want them to be able to do that operation one time, so we'll remove the button from the view controller when they do that operation. And we're gonna look at how priorities allow us to resize the other buttons based on whether that button is there or not in a flexible way. So first we're gonna create a constraint between this first button and its super view. We're gonna create a leading space constraint and a constraint to the bottom layout guide. And we'll create a constraint between the last button and the trailing space. And you saw I used control drag to do those two, and I'm gonna use the pin button to create the constraints on this middle button. Again, there's multiple ways you can create constraints and 
You can use the one that's easiest for you in this case because we're creating constraints between the like button and two different buttons rather than control drag two different times. I'll use the pin menu to do that. Change these to standard value. We also want to align the bottoms of these two with the first button. Add that. And then we want an equal width constraint on all of them. We now have all the constraints that we want, and we just want to update the frames to match. So that's our basic layout. Let's take a look at this in the preview assistant editor and make sure that it looks right on different sizes and orientations. Make some room for myself here. So the four inch looks pretty good. Let's rotate that. Looks good in landscape. Let's add a 4.7 inch. Yeah, that looks right as well. Okay, it's all looking good. And we want to add a little bit of code. When I click either of these second two buttons, I want to remove them from the super view. So use control drag, add an outlet, an action I mean. We'll just call this button tapped. And we'll change this to UI button. We want the third button to have the same action, so a control drag from it. And now let's add the code. For the code, we just want to remove the center from the super view. Let's run this and see what it looks like. So this looks correct, and if I use command right arrow to rotate the simulator, I can see that it behaves correctly in landscape, it lays out correctly. And if I click the like button, the behavior is correct, but the layout's not right. Now not only did the buttons not expand to fill up the space, but they contracted. We removed some of the constraints from the view, and now those buttons don't know where to lay out. So let's fix that. If the wink button does not exist, we want the like button to be constrained to the super view on the trailing edge. So I use control drag. And I set a trailing space to container margin. Let me hide my assistant and bring back up the size inspector. Now the like button has this new trailing space constraint that we just created, but we don't want it to be equal to 189. We want it to be zero. But we don't want it to have a priority required because it's not always going to be constrained to the trailing edge of the super view. So let's change this priority to 999. And we see a couple things happened in the, with the guides in the editor. The red lines went away. It now knows which constraints have priority over the other ones. And it also shows this new constraint as a dotted line. The constraint between the like button and the super view is a dotted line because it's not a required priority. Any priority less than required will draw as a, as a dotted line. Okay, also if the middle button is missing, we want a constraint between the first and the third buttons. So I'll add that now. Again, using control drag there, we'll create a horizontal spacing constraint. We'll change it to standard value. We want a standard spacing between them if there's no middle button. And the priority again is 999. If both of these buttons are missing, then we want the first button to align with the trailing margin of the super view as well. So let's add that constraint. Control drag to the super view, add a trailing space, and we're going to edit this one. Change that to zero. Now instead of making this one 999, we want to make it 998. We don't want it to conflict with the other one that we just created. So this sets the order that the constraints are evaluated in. Okay, let's build and run this. Now if I click on the middle button, the other two expand to take up the space. If I click on the third button, again the 
first to expand to take up the space, and if I click on the second button, then the first one takes up all the space. That's exactly what we want. Let's look at the debug view hierarchy in a couple of these instances and just understand what it's showing us. So this shows us exactly what we have right now in the simulator, the one button. You can click on it, and in the size inspector, you can see the constraints that are active on this view. And the grayed out constraints are ones that have been superseded by something else. So in this case, there is a constraint for the width based on the content size, but our leading and trailing margin constraints are superseding that one. There's a button down here at the bottom for show constraints. If I click that, then when I click on the button, it shows me the constraints that are applied to it in, it, in the view as well. Okay, we can stop this now. Let's look at another scenario. We're going to add a button and a label to the top of our view controller. And we want the button to be in the top right corner, and we want the label to be centered and at the top of the view. Let's create a couple constraints here. So I'm going to constrain the button, trailing space, and vertical space to the top layout guide. I'm going to create a baseline constraint between the button and the label. And I'm going to center the label in the uh, super view. Let's update frames. Let's take a look at the preview assistant editor. See if this is doing what we want. One of the things that the preview assistant editor is good for is seeing how things will look in different configurations, but also in different languages. If you have localizations already added, then they'll show up in this list down here. But if even if you don't, there's this handy language called double length pseudo language. And this just doubles every string that you have in your inter interface and shows you how the layout will respond to the, to the longer strings. So let's take a look at that. Oh, that's not right. So our label has doubled in length and now it's overlaying the button. So let's add a constraint between the label and the button a horizontal spacing constraint. And again, we don't want this to be equal to 173. What we want is standard value, but we don't want the button to grow like it just did when I changed that to standard. We don't want the label to grow. We want them both to have the same size that they had before. And we do that by setting this relation greater than or equal to. We want the space between the label and the button to always be greater than or equal to the standard value. But you can see now in my double length pseudo language that the label's getting clipped and it's pushing the button to a size of zero. And what we want to happen is this centering constraint, we want to have a lower priority than our greater than or equal to constraint. So with the centering constraint selected, we change this priority to low. And now we can see in the preview that the label pushes off to the left and doesn't override our save button. And we'll look at this a little bit closer in the next demo. Well, that's it for this video tutorial. As always, we'd like to leave you with a challenge. For this challenge, you're going to create this layout that gives a little more space between the views and portrait and compresses the space to fit in landscape. All of the details are in the challenge document. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.